That's why we need to join Mitt Romney in sending a message this November. I'm an American, and doggone it, I ride outside. Doggone it is an expression of remorse over something negative that happens. So if you miss your plane or if you something generally fairly mild, you might just say doggone it. So it's uh, another form of saying damn it? It's a euphemism for saying god damn it, yes. And what it looks to be is it looks to be a form of what's called rhyming slang, where they reverse the order of the letters, so God turns into dog. So instead of saying God damn it, you say dog gone it. And it's old fashioned if you do it or a politician uh, does it. Like in this video, it's more to create this comical effect. It's a little old-fashioned, but I think it's largely still accepted as part of normal speech, and it doesn't have to be ironic. Do you ever do you ever use this dog dying? Uh, that's a good question. I I might yes. Um, okay. I think I might do it slightly ironic, but not that ironic. Dog gone it. I missed the bus this morning. Doggone it, there's no more donuts. Doggone it, it's 7.20 and I'm already late for work. Doggone it, it's cold and it's cold and snowing outside. In my first term, we ended the war in Iraq. In my second term, I will win the war on Christmas. The war on Christmas generally refers to a people who don't like Christmas and who uh, use that time to say negative things about Christmas. For example, uh, people will steal the baby Jesus out of the manger as a form of protest, or they will uh, try to take the government to court and say that they can't have a nativity display or they will have some sort of alternate neg or they will have some sort of alternate nativity display like a satan like a like a satanic nativity or do other things to insult christmas and insult christianity and why why would these people do that A lot of these people do it because they're atheist and they feel that public expression of religious sentiments is wrong in some way or that they feel that the Christian influence on the U.S. is too dominant. So as a form of protest against that, they want to say negative things about Christianity. So are you a... uh Atheist or not? Me, I don't consider myself to be an atheist, no. So you're a religious person? It's kind of hard to say. I believe in God, but I think I believe in God more in a universal sort of way than uh, any one particular religion. But can also be there, there are also another movement uh, in this political, politically correct society, a melting pot that the United States is oftentimes called, that many people want to uh, neutralize the influence of Christmas because it's a Christian holiday and there are people, many people who belong to different religions. Uh Uh-huh, that's true too. Um, uh, One more thing, I consider myself to be a cultural Christian which means that I grew up in a society that's Christian-based, so I tend to honor the values that the Christian science-based society is built around. So you don't believe in evolution? Sure, I believe in evolution. But it's contrary to the Bible and and Christianity. I don't see how that's true. Well, because they believe in uh, creationism and it's opposite 
to the well, evolution. Well, maybe a few people do, but certainly, certainly not that very, not very many of them. So an, another sign of uh, the war on Christmas uh, could be considered the change of uh, of uh, Merry Christmas when people wish have to have Merry Christmas uh, and replace it with Happy Holidays, correct? Um, I'm not sure if that would be a war on Christmas or if that would be more of just a neutral way of referring to the holidays where you're not automatically assuming that the other person is going to openly celebrate Christmas. But at the same time, since it is a holiday, you can wish them happy holidays in a neutral manner without risking uh, a negative response. In my first term, we repealed the policy known as don't ask, don't tell. Okay, what, uh, what is don't ask, don't tell? A don't ask, don't tell refers to a government policy during the 1990s where gay soldiers were asked not to tell other people in the military that they were gay. And the commanding authority was asked not to ask the soldiers whether they were gay. Prior to that point, if someone was gay, that was grounds for getting dismissed from the military or was considered to be negative. So the don't ask, don't tell policy was part of transitioning the uh, military to becoming more of a gay-friendly organization. That's all for today. Tom Taylor is an ESL tutor. He teaches English in the United States and outside all over the world using Skype. He can be reached at his website, which is esl-fullsteamahead.com. Click on this link and check out his website and email with questions. Thank you, Tom, and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.